What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? Mice were put on two sides of a wall with a door in. Only the right mouse could open the door. Slowly, they filled the left mouse's room with water, and eventually when right mouse saw them in danger, they opened the door. However, mice that had previously been on he left side and were now on the right, mice who had previously been wetted, opened the door considerably faster because they knew how unpleasant it was to be in the other scenario. Basically mice have empathy. Link here. This makes me happy, I wish more posts on this were about things like this, I want to know more. Edit. I just mean it makes me really happy to see that mice have those sorts of feelings, too many times we are taught by the media that animals don't have those types of feelings, so it made me smile to think that a little cute mouse saved the other mouse, as if a human would. <laughs> Hedonic adaptation. Put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later, and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. This is really interesting. I never thought about this. I guess you have completely new highs and lows under different circumstances. There was some study I read about a few years ago that says people's overall happiness is either set at a young age or just kind of innate. You tend to be happy or unhappy regardless of your situation, as where most people tend to think you are made happy or unhappy by life. It kind of measures well with what I've observed. I've known incredibly well-to-do people and incredibly poor people. Happiness doesn't seem to correlate to that a lot from my experience. But maybe I'm just looking for an excuse as to why I'm a miserable bastard when I have most the things most people want. Although to counter the study I'll say that the happiest people I've known generally have lots of people who care about them and who they care about. And I've never known someone who is simultaneously happy and lonely. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked into thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty drunk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it and was completely amazed at how I felt. I've done this to younger siblings and relatives that won't shut up about wanting to drink shots. We just rub a bit of alcohol around the rim of the shot glass and fill it with water. Three deep and they'll start snoozing on the sofa within the hour. Solomon Ash's experiment on conformity. He set up a test wherein he would show three lines of different lengths to five or six individuals, I forgot the exact number, who had to state which line was the longest of the three. The thing is, only the last individual is the participant, and the others are actors paid to answer in a specific manner. For the first few questions, they choose the correct answer, but later on they start choosing the wrong one. The participants are conflicted as to whether they will say the correct answer or conform to the wrong answer, as to not be judged by others or due to self-doubt of their own answers. In the end, most do conform. It's really interesting since it shows how powerful conformity is in the face of doubt, up to a point that some even question their own sanity during the test. Another variation of the experiment also had interesting results. It had the same setup with five individuals, with the last person being the participant. However, this time some of the actors say the wrong answer, while one actor says the correct one. There was an increase in participants who would choose the correct answer and avoid conformity. It shows how much doubt one can have on oneself when alone, but be brought back to self-confidence when they find outside support. Edit. Conformity in participants might be caused by either being afraid others' judgment or due to self-doubt. Split brain studies. One example. By providing differing information to each hemisphere of the brain in split-brain individuals, those with a severed corpus callosum, meaning there's no communication between the two hemispheres, they found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand if they saw it making a mistake. Basically each side of the brain controls one side of your body, and in split-brain people you can actually make both sides display a disagreement with the other. Which is insane, if you think about it. 
there's another similar experiment where people with split brains have one eye able to see a picture and the other eye can't see it. Then they draw the picture with one hand. While they're drawing the picture if you ask them, they have no idea what the image they're being shown is, it's like they can't see it even though they can draw it. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in a box with only that lever, it will press that lever as much as you'll allow it. The rat will stop eating and drinking and just do cocaine. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in an enriched environment, e.g. other rats to play with, toys, place to explore, where it could still press the lever for cocaine, it may press the lever occasionally, but not as frequently as its counterpart in the dull environment. These findings were a big deal in the behaviorism world because they put a lot of previous results into context and help explain the link between poverty and drug use. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect this to blow up like this. I'm on mobile and don't have access to a computer right now, so linking sources will be difficult, but a Google search of Rat Park will pull up plenty of sources. I was wrong about the rats being conditioned using cocaine, it was morphine, but the idea is still the same. Many people have pointed out errors with these experiments, and there are plenty, but that's the beauty of science, it allows for the development of testable hypotheses which can change, given the current state of evidence. Also, thank you for the silver kind stranger. Edit 2. This experiment does not prove that bad environments facilitate drug use or that good environments protect against it. Addiction is immensely complex, and this is just a small piece of it. Research on learned helplessness is fascinating. Researchers would put dogs into shuttle boxes, long cage-like structures that the dog could move around in, and would shock the dog through the floor on one side of the box. The dog, at first, could easily escape the shock by moving to the other side of the box. Eventually, the researcher adds a wall so the dog can't escape the shocks, it just sits there, being shocked without escape. Through this the dog learns helplessness over repeated trials and extended periods of time. Even when the wall is taken down, the dog won't walk to the other side and avoid the shocks anymore. It has become so used to the pain that it doesn't even try to escape when escape would be easy. This research has been used to explain certain aspects of human behavior, especially related to repeated experiences of abuse, addiction, and poverty. It takes a long time to get somebody out of this mindset and is possibly one of the reasons why people get stuck in terrible situations. I don't know the name of it, but apparently two people become closer if they survive through something together. Not even actual surviving death scenarios, but anything that has you on your toes and heart racing, like a roller coaster. Like having a bomb on a bus and the bomb being armed as soon as the bus gets to 50 miles per hour. True romance. And people say romance is dead. The car crash experiment. It demonstrated that the way investigators word a question has an immediate effect on the subject's memory of an event. It was part of a suite of studies by Elizabeth Loftus, with various other co-researchers, that began to call in to question the veracity of eyewitness accounts. www.simplypsychology.org slash Loftus Palmer. I took a class on human memory and let me tell you. We don't remember anything very well. Including your recollection of that class. Like, comment, and share. Reddit Story Topper. Subscribe now.